morning guys uh, i'm not going to ask you to stand up because i know the pains of bangaloreans <laughs> they've already taken pains to come here from a long way anywhere you go is you know far away so um in the morning bapu was talking about what next right so i thought you know let's talk about what next and maybe one of these trends or topics can make it to the next conference uh about you know future of design uh future of business of design and so i'm going to talk today about business of design where is it heading really you know we have um a lot of these um factors economic geopolitical um technological that are affecting the business of design the business of user experience um so where is it heading so i'm going to talk about that in brief uh, i'm samir uh, from use designs um i've i've been in this field for about uh, 17 plus years now uh, i started this um, user experience design studio um way back in 2009 and we have been on a mission to kind of uh, change the world uh, in india through design um so i'll just talk about these few things uh and feel free to you know contradict comment as you go along one of the things that i'd like to highlight is that you'll see some hashtags out there uh feel free to you know comment on that and you know share your thoughts on what you think about that so i'm just uh talk going to talk about first a few trends that you know we see today in india and uh, then we're going to talk about you know where this business is heading really uh so the first trend i see actually is a major change from uh, 50 years ago there was like systems of records right everything was you know about creating and capturing transactional data supply chain management data inventory management data human resource management that was called systems of records now we have moved from systems of records to something called as systems of engagements uh with the advent of internet uh and you know employee engagement we have gone to different types of tools uh like emails and you know social networking and things like that that is called systems of engagement so first systems of records where there was structured data and now from that to unstructured data where you are talking constantly about a company or a product or service um and then you know these companies are trying to make sense out of it from that era now systems of engagement we are moving towards systems of things in collaboration with systems of engagements and as things like even chairs and tables those dumb devices become intelligent we are going to need to have a different mechanism to really capture data analyze that data and make sense out of the data in real time it's a huge challenge and those i call as systems of engagements so that's you know first trend that is trending the second thing that is happening is computing everywhere wherever you go you see either automation you see intelligence in systems you see computing right even your car today uh for example zoom car right you go there and you see that you know you have to just open it with your mobile phones and then when you leave the car automatically all the data goes back to the you know zoom car people you don't have to do really anything so computing is kind of coming in every aspect of life that's the second thing that is trending third thing is the data explosion i mean i'm sure all of you have faced already a uh, number of whatsapp groups how many are you subscribe to right so there's huge explosion of data that is being seen and these are some stats very simple facebook users share nearly 2.5 million pieces of content every minute twitter users tweet nearly 300000 times every minute instagram users post nearly 220000 new photos 
and YouTube users upload 7 to 2 hours of new video content. So these are just stats to look at but this is the kind of data explosion that we are looking at and that is absolutely going to impact our lives and the way we look at all of the things. Another thought here, as user experience designers, as cognitive psychologists, we are you know very near to people and we work with people's brains and the capacity of the brain. This is what is happening, right? We are bombarded today on an average with 400 million bits of information per second. What is the processing power of the brain? It's just 2000 bits per second. And in the middle, there is your, you know, visual system that can process 10 million bits per second. Okay. Now with the data explosion that you see, computing everywhere, everything becoming smart, what is going to happen? This gap is going to widen further and further out. Okay. So I just want you guys to think about this for a moment and think about the implication of that on the trade of user experience design. The fourth trend is cloud computing. So with the advent of you know everything going on the cloud plus you know you have you know mobile data, different devices and all the data is available to different devices at all different times. So right now you know people are struggling with how to synchronize this data um, and have the same kind of experience on different devices at the same time. So I'm moving from my uh, desktop to mobile to maybe a tablet when I'm on the go and how do you retain that exper uh, experience is what cloud computing is contributing to. The fifth trend that we see is the explosion in mobile users and internet usage. Especially in India, today there are about 900 odd million subscribers of mobile. We are the second largest market after China for mobile subscriptions, right? So here's just a statistic um, about, you know, the internet usage on mobiles, 232 million internet users, that's plus 37 person year on year. We are ahead of, you know, all the developed countries um, and, and just, you know, one notch behind China in terms of internet usage on mobile. Um, but we are the top country in new internet users. About 63 million people added just in 2014. So think about that as well. So you can see here, yeah, that's Nigeria on the first spot. Uh, surprises. Uh, so India is second with a mobile percentage of total internet traffic by country. Um, and this is, you know, the total percentage of e-commerce sales in India through mobile. Okay, so it's a huge explosion. You know, we have suddenly gone from <coughs> communicating with hand, somebody yesterday, you know, did that, with gestures to, you know, directly into mobile, even in the rural areas. The sixth trend that I see is of the startup culture. Right, booming startup culture, things that happened in the 80s, mid 80s and 90s in Silicon Valley in California is happening here today. Startups, you know, the valuations are, you know, going sky, skyrocketing and they're getting big money as well. So I know we are all facing that problem of hiring good designers as compared to them. And then the content type is also changing. So if you look at all the content across the internet, uh, from text to images to videos now, right? And the formats of the videos are also changing from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 to vertical video viewing. That is a big market. Uh, last year it was about 10%. Today it is 30%. Uh, horizontal versus, you know, vertical viewing of videos. The next trend is, you know, the agile and just-in-time 
not just processes, but people, things, products and services. So everyone is expecting, you know, I should get X, Y, Z at the moment when I require it, right? So that's the kind of, uh, you know, uh, user behavior and thinking that we see coming up uh, in the future. The ninth trend that I see, and this is a one is big, we all see that, is the bridging the gap between the physical and digital. So there is hardly any boundaries now between the physical world and the digital world. Everything is crossing over with the advent of, you know, maybe watches or rings or maybe other NFC type devices. And the last but not the least is the M governance and E governance in India, which is on the rise and it will keep on rising. So these are the 10 trends that, you know, and, and when I started looking at different trends, we kind of came up with about 50, but we cut it short to about 10, uh, taking from, you know, different uh, areas of life because we wanted to keep it very simple. So what's the impact on the business of design? And, you know, feel free to, you know, tweet your comments on that. And I'm going to, you know, kind of present a model here about uh, the business of design, um, which talks about, you know, business models, UX service design models, organizational setup, design practices, and individual skills. So all of this, all these trends are going to have an impact in the future on all these four or five things. And I'm going to just, you know, randomly start with impact on organizational setup. So how does an organizational setup get impacted because of these trends? Um, and, and I'm going to talk generically about startups, mid-level or established companies as well. So the good news for all of us here, designers, is that uh, UX teams will keep on growing. Okay, so today we see that uh, a lot of startups are also coming in. Uh, and, and they are hiring a lot of UX designers. We see a lot of requirements for, you know, ads out there. I see the board out there where there is, it's full of ads for designers. So it will keep on growing. So the other trend there would be that non-traditional industries will start looking at UX design teams as well. Um, by non-traditional, I mean uh, the pharma industry, for example or manufacturing industries where traditionally there was only product design, they would start looking at more and more UX designers to join their teams because now the product is no more there, everything is software. You know, for example, the car companies, they are starting to look at UX designers to come and join their teams. Um, the other good news is designers will get involved early in the process. So rather than, hey, why don't you come and paint the screens, right? They will start getting involved right from the requirement stage or even before that. Uh, from design to actually strategy, uh, that's the journey that designers will make. The org structures will also change because of these trends. Um, the siloed org structure will no more be enough where you have either centralized teams or decentralized, you know, working with some software, uh, software business units, they will need to change at a, you know, higher level where designers will be represented somewhere higher up in the management as well. Uh, and, and that's the next point about, you know, C-level positions. Designers need to sit on the, you know, boards and they will do that uh, moving ahead. Um, though we see that, you know, the growing UX teams and all in other, other non-traditional companies, UX as a core will be retained because of um, a lot of these companies think that my core is something different, right? Even the traditional companies now are trying to realize that if I am a technology company, I should retain that and then leave it to the experts to do the other job. And that's what, you know, uh, the UX as a core would talk about. 
what is the impact on individual skills? What do we as designers need to think about? Um, I think from a specialist role, the designers should move or will move to a generalist role. Instead of doing very siloed work of I only do wireframe design or I only do user research or prototyping, they will need to do a very horizontal type of generalist work where they are adept at doing research, design, prototyping and so on and so forth and also impacting the strategy. The skills will need to go beyond UI design. So impacting um, the other types of designs, not just software design, not just screen design, but maybe service design, design of people, design of training, uh, maybe design of you know ecosystems is what we see will happen in the future. With the advent of this you know huge data explosion that we see, um, I think uh, the user experience designer itself will be like a data researcher. How do you make sense of that data that is coming up real time, right? Every single minute there is tons of data that is getting generated. What do you do, right? You know what is happening in the market, but do you know why is it happening? That aspect the user experience designer will bring in and therefore that data researcher position will be created where UX will need to make sense of why for every single bit of data. Um, and then understanding the moment of interest context. So the context is very important. We always say that you know um, in user experience context is the most important thing. But we will go from a scenario level context to a task level context to a moment level context because every moment the context is going to change and understanding that is going to be real challenging. The trend of designing in a silo is again going to change to participatory design. Meaning I am a designer, I can design, but I have to design with other people as well. And those could be, you know, technology people, business people, product management, etc. But also with my customers and other external agencies. So that's another skill that you know individuals need, will need to bring. What is the impact on design practices? Okay. So I talked about the moment of interest context. So it is almost like. And I know that research is kind of on the decline. We hardly do any research. We hardly do any summative testing. We do some formative testing here and there. Uh, that's the trend that I see when I talk to uh, other customers as well. Uh, but the moment of interest context is going to be very, very important. And therefore, I think it's very important to know the life of people. It's no longer enough to, you know, kind of talk in terms of context of a tool, context of maybe a service, context of, uh, you know, a product. It's going to be what is the life of that user or a segment of users. And therefore, life research is going to be very, very important to understand what are the behaviors of a segment of people. Um, the other thing that I see is, of course, ecosystem design. While user experience designers are right now only involved in software design, app design, mobile design, they will need to expand their horizon to design for services, people, and other aspects of you know, the entire ecosystem and it will become an ecosystem design. So that's going to be very important uh, in the future, as well as prototyping. We will not have that much time, actually, to you know, kind of test our prototypes and then take it to the market. 
the speed of prototyping is going to be important where uh, the prototype actually looks and behaves almost like real time. Um, and, and then uh, a very important part is going to be because of intelligence to the machines and the machine to machine communication and machine to human communication design for trust in machines is going to be a big area eventually. Um, you know, design for trust has been there for about 10, 15 years now, but in mission critical systems uh, where NASA kind of uses those concepts, but now it is going to come into, you know, the day to day life as well. What is the impact on UX service design models? Um, so even today we are kind of uh, consultants, right? We are consultants internally uh, to, to our, you know, development teams. Um, but that role is going to change from consultant to more of a collaborator. So initially it's a support system um, contributor. I contribute to this product. Now I collaborate to a core discoverer. That's going to be the trend. Uh, and traditional UX is not going to be enough. Okay, so if you're talking about providing a service even internally to your organization or externally, if you say, oh, I'm going to provide interaction design and visual design and, you know, prototyping, that's going to be commoditized. It's not going to be enough. You have to go beyond that and say, I'm, how can I impact the strategy? How can I impact future products definition? And we, we've been trying to do that with some of our customers as well. So, um, and the other point is about internal support to co-discoverer, you know, which, which I was talking about earlier. Even today we see that in a lot of organizations, uh, the UX team is an internal support team. Or it is almost at the fag end, it comes at the fag end, uh, where all the, you know, development is done. And then, you know, somebody says, oh, this doesn't work. Then they run to the UX team and say, hey, what's wrong with this? Paint some colors to this, right? It's, it's still happening today. So from that role to co-discoverer uh, is going to happen in the future. And uh, what is the impact on the business models, right? With all this, the business models are also going to, you know, emerge and change from simple, you know, time and material to fixed price to partnerships, skin in the game, right? If, if you want to design an ecosystem, you have to be an equal partner to your internal team or to your customer. If it's design studios, then to your customers, of course. So th there will be no longer, uh, you know, I will come in and give you some advice as consultant or give you a design here and there and then go off. But then they will say, prove it to me. You know, put your skin in the game. Your payment will depend on that, right? Let me be successful, I'll pay you. Right? The payment structures are going to change the future. And there are going to be turnkey design projects for ecosystems. So if I'm, let's say, designing an ecosystem for uh, uh, the experience of an uh, airport, it has to be a turnkey design project where software comes in place, hardware is there, service is there, everything is you know, related to each other, transportation is there. Um, and then, just like probably safety as a requirement, uh, I believe that user experience uh, is going to be a mandatory requirement in the future. And when I'm saying the future, I'm talking about about three years from now, not, not too long. So, yeah, uh, these are my top picks uh, from the top. Okay. And... That's it. I'm done. Thank you.